It's a new day. The Joe Biden administration is kicking off today. But it was really interesting that uh, despite the fact that we were expecting these tit-for-tat actions, uh, given what we've seen so far with the sanctions on Chinese officials, on U.S. officials, that China released this list of 28 people from the Trump administration while uh, President Joe Biden was speaking. Is this a message for the incoming administration? Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me part of your program. And I really don't uh, uh, think it really means much at all. It was perhaps a little parting shot at the Trump administration, but really will have no impact. It's not going to affect uh, President Biden's commitment uh, to having candid uh, but more constructive uh, dialogue with uh, China, along with all the other world leaders. Um, this is a new day, a fresh day in terms of diplomacy for the United States with all of its uh, allies, as well as countries around the world, including China. So what does this mean for China policy exactly, especially when it comes to the broader Asia region? Because we had heard from Tony Blinken just yesterday in the confirmation hearing that he actually sided with President Trump on taking a tougher stance on China. We know that, of course, he was also the architect of the pivot to Asia, which has been sort of uh, uh, replaced with the Indo-Pacific strategy. What are we going to see there? Well, obviously, uh, the United States government and uh, business leaders and civic groups uh, have had some uh, deep concerns about China's trade and economic policy uh, and certainly agreed. Uh, and I think the Trump administration recognized that. Uh, but uh, uh, their approach, their strategy was all wrong and resulted in a trade war, which really affected the American consumer and American businesses. Uh, and actually enhanced uh, business operations for many of our allies around the world who have similar concerns about China's trade and economic policies and things like rule of law. So while we, the intent of the Trump administration was correct, uh, their strategy was completely ineffective and has actually exacerbated tensions with China. You're going to see uh, a Biden administration uh, equally concerned uh, about the, the complaints that American businesses and American governments have had about China, their unfair trade policies, their subsidies, uh, their uh, 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 failure to abide by commitments or international standards such as the WTO. Uh, but you're going to see the Biden administration working with other countries that have similar concerns to have a more effective, unified approach in addressing these issues with China. Ambassador, is there a sense that the team, not just Anthony Blinken, but certainly the entire national security and foreign policy team that's being assembled, perhaps is taking a more hawkish approach than some that might have expected a bit more of a, a moderate or, or, or pausing nature of the engagement with China? Because you take a look at Blinken's comments that Sherry mentioned, you take a look at uh, Laura Rosenberger, Catherine Tyre, the incoming US uh, trade representative, as well as Kurt Campbell at the National Security Council as well. All of them have either taken actions or, or or provided rhetoric so far that suggests that there will be a lot of candor and, and forthrightness when it comes to dealing with Beijing. Is that a balance that they ex you expect them to strike at this point? Well, I think that you can always say that uh, all of these uh, individuals have long been known for their candor uh, and being uh, very transparent, along with uh, uh, then Vice President Biden. He's never shied away from speaking plainly and truthfully and openly and candidly with the Chinese leaders, whether it's dealing with human rights, uh, whether it's trade and economic policies or freedom of the press. Uh, and so this is, uh, this is really not new. Uh, but again, uh, these concerns that American uh, diplomats, American business and the American people and American workers have had about China have been brewing for quite some time, growing frustration. And uh, that's why even the Trump administration uh, came out with their policies. But again, uh, there's no disagreement about the uh, assessment of China's violation of trade rules uh, and international standards. The, the, the challenge is how to develop an effective strategy to try to address these issues with China. And I think you're going to see a different approach under President Biden. At the same time, uh, President Biden and, and, his, and his entire team also understand that there are many areas of agreement, of commonality with China. And so while there may be frank discussions and very candid uh, dialogue on these areas of disagreement, you'll also see 
uh, the Biden administration trying to work with China on areas of commonality, whether it's uh, uh, finding a cure for cancer, addressing climate change, uh, fighting terrorism around the world, and obviously uh, trying to halt uh, the proliferation of nuclear weapons uh, by North Korea. What do you think about the role of China and the status of China as we speak with day one of the Biden administration? We spoke with the former uh, Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull yesterday, and he actually, it's his view that China has overplayed its hand, that Xi Jinping is not as strong as perhaps is perceived, and uh, with particular reference to perhaps the economic recovery going forward, as well as the missed opportunities that they had during the Trump administration to take on more of a global leadership role. Well, obviously, I think many countries around the world are beginning to understand that they have to approach China very, very carefully. They really have to study the issues. Uh, a lot of the investments uh, and the initiatives by China under the uh, Belt Road uh, initiative are coming into question, and many countries are beginning to say, hmm, maybe it's not such a good deal. Uh, the, the generosity of China comes with so many uh, strings attached and uh, potential pitfalls or landmines for those uh, recipient countries, because uh, they need to make sure that uh, the projects are sustainable, economically viable. Otherwise, there could be very severe consequences for the people and the governments of those recipient uh, nations. So there's a lot of, I think, re-examination uh, by many countries around the world in terms of their re economic relationship with China. Uh, but uh, China clearly has a role to play in, uh, in uh, uh, international affairs. Uh, they have been contributing to peacekeeping forces with the UN. They've worked with the United States mm. on humanitarian relief around the world, as well as trying to, for instance, uh, stop the uh, piracy off the coast of Africa. So we need China engaged in the world, but in terms that are fair uh, to other countries as well.